Hey everyone, Seth here at Tulu Studio. I recently gave a lecture on utility AI in a university course that I'm teaching on game AI, and I thought that it would be helpful to just drop a portion of that lecture here on the channel. So this video will show you, uh, show me doing a live coding session where I build and tweak a utility AI system into a very simplistic Pokemon-like turn-based battler game. It's a much cleaner implementation of utility AI than what I showed in my old tutorial series here on the channel. So feel free to go grab this project from the GitHub and uh, use it as a fresh starting point to build your systems off of. I put the dry, boring whiteboarding concepts in the second half of the video. So if you're not familiar with utility AI, fast forward to the later parts in the video for the concepts and then come back to the live coding session to see them in action. With that, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more content like this and let me know in the comments your thoughts and what kinds of things you'd like to see in the future. All right, so here we are in Unity, and this is our uh, a little game that I put together uh, so that we can uh, build a utility AI system for this little game here. And this is like a little Pokemon battle type game here, and these two agents are acting on their own, um, and they're just throwing random attacks at each other right now. So let's go ahead and press play and see what's happening. So the blue warrior starts, picks a random attack, throws it at the critter, ends turn, and then we click next turn, and it's the critter is able to do its own thing, throws a random attack at the agent, uh, and then the blue warrior, uh, we click next to advance the round, and the blue warrior continues to attack, and this just goes back and forth until one of them dies, and when they die, the round basically resets, and they, um, their health and energy goes back to 100. Oh, and there's a little healing uh, action there too, and... It, okay, so they both are healing, and eventually, if we just keep clicking next turn, next turn, next turn, uh, one of them will die. So, let's see. There you go. So, the blue warrior died to the critter, and the round just restarts. Okay, so right now, there is no AI system here at all. They're only randomly throwing attacks at each other, so there's no intelligence here. What we want to do is basically build the, a utility AI system that will uh, intelligently pick out what action the agent should be doing, given the uh, in game world information. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what's sitting on these characters. There's an agent script here that just holds a list of actions uh, right here and a bunch of other stuff here. So um, a bunch of other support code here. So let's take a look at the actions themselves. The actions are sitting uh, in nested game, uh, child game objects. And the actions have an energy cost and a max damage. Uh, that's for the attack action. The heal action has uh, energy cost and a heal amount. Okay. And let's take a look at where the code is calling them to make, uh, to actually uh, do, do things. It's actually sitting in this script here. Um, random decision maker and this is being called uh so you can see there inherits from a parent class called decision maker and the decision maker just uh requires that whatever inherits it is implementing a decide action so this random decision maker class over uh implements a decide action and just returns a random action so you can imagine when we write our utility ai decision maker we're going to do the same thing we're going to override this method uh, implement a decide at the action um, and the logic is just going to go score all these actions and return the best going actions okay now uh, this is being called in the agent script right here and so you can see here this is where uh, the support code kind of calls in the AI system uh, the agent script uh, it has a code routine here that when it, it gets called to perform an action uh, just just displays a little thinking, waits for two seconds, uh, runs the decision maker decide action, gets an action from the decision maker, and then runs the rest of the code to execute the action. Okay, so uh, we have a uh, very uh, ex uh, modular way to plug in whatever decision maker system we want to put in here, right? And we're about to uh, go ahead and write out a utility AI decision maker and replace this random decision maker with a utility AI one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that as a first step. We're going to go ahead and write a decision, a utility AI decision maker to replace the random decision maker. So let's go ahead and create a class here. 
called utility AI. And let's go ahead and start coding it out. Okay, so the utility AI is going to inherit from decision maker, which means that it needs to implement the decide behavior, decide action class here. Okay, and it's taking a list of actions here and it's going to return something. Okay. So let's write our, our, our logic here, right? So we're gonna uh, loop through all the actions and uh, score uh, the, the actions, okay? And how do we score the actions? Uh, we basically score action by um, looping through the considerations of each action, scoring the uh, considerations, then average the consideration scores to get the action score. Okay, so that's the logic that we're gonna code out here. So let's go ahead and go do that. So if we're gonna loop through each action here, and then for each action, uh, we're gonna need to loop through and uh, loop through their considerations and score the considerations. So let's see here, how do we wanna do this? We're gonna go ahead and Keep a score here. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll keep a score here. And we're going to say for each uh, consideration, C and, and A dot consideration. So, uh, of course, the consideration class has not been implemented, but we're going to write the logic first and then we'll go back and implement. Uh, uh, what whatever logic whatever other classes we need to okay and this is how i like to script i usually program by um, writing out the things that need um I, I i just program by just coding out what i think the logic should be and then i go back and fix all those squiggly lines by creating the classes that are needed the methods the uh, fields properties uh, and whatever is needed to uh, fix all these errors here. But the important part is to get down the main logic first, okay? So that we have an idea of what these this consideration class would actually uh, look like. So for each consideration in action, uh, the consideration list uh, for the actions, um, we, pr we 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 want, probably want to do something like, uh, let's see here, probably want to do um, score, equals c dot um, score and we're going to call score method here okay and that will give us uh, we're just going to add up all the scores and then at the end we do um, uh, score equals score divided by uh, a dot considerations dot length something like that right because we're taking the average we we we, we score all the, all the all the uh, considerations of the action we sum it up and then we uh, divide by the total num number of considerations to get our average score okay so this is the score of the action we might come back and fix fix this up to to, to make it actually uh, uh, work in a way that's sensible but for now this is the logic Okay, so this would be the score. Once we loop through one uh, one action, this would be the, the score of the action. So we action, that means that action probably needs to have some sort of score. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do score equal, score equals score. Here, so we're just storing the action score. So this takes care of uh, calculating the score for the action. 
now what we want to do is loop through the uh, the 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 all the actions and figure out what is the highest scoring action. So we're just going to do for each AI action in actions. Um, I'm going to say float best score. And then this uh, A will say um, if A dot score is greater than best score, then we're just going to set the best score equal to uh, A dot, or sorry, uh, I guess we don't need, um, we'll need an AI action here. Best action was null. And if score is best, we set this to a dot score and then we set the best action to a and when that once that finishes looping through then we can go ahead and return uh, best action like that okay so that is the logic of our utility AI system here uh, at least it's the general general logic. Um, if we need to fix it, we'll come back and fix it to make it work as needed. But this is the idea here. We loop through all the action. We uh, calculate the score of the considerations. We sum uh, these, the score. We divide it by the total length to get the average score. And then we set it equal to the action score. And then we loop through again just to pick out what the best scoring action is and return it. Uh, so uh, this will then give us the best action for the um, the agent to do and uh, then in the agent script this decision maker here we're going to drop it because it's a serializable serialized field we're going to drop in the utility ai decision maker into the inspector okay so let's see here where did the utility so let's go now and uh, fix all these red square blue lines now that we have the logic nailed down we'll go and fix it so the consideration well Let's go ahead and generate a new consideration uh, class here. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and go in AI action and store a score here. So we'll say we'll just do a public float uh, score. This will be a get set. Okay, uh, score, yep. And then now let's go to the consideration class and flesh that out. Change this to public. Probably gonna need Unity Engine. Okay, so what is this consideration class going to be like? Um, we want to be able to uh, modify it in the um, in the inspector, so we're going to add a serializable here, and then uh, let's start typing out what's in the consideration. So uh, we know that in our utility AI, we needed a score method here to run the scoring logic for the consideration. So let's go ahead and create that method here. Run score. And uh, for now, we'll just return zero to get rid of the errors. And then uh, let's think about this. So this the consideration needs to take in game world data, uh, convert it to uh, or normalize that game world data, and then feed the normalized value into a response curve that will then return us the utility of that consideration. Right. So we're probably going to need a response curve here. And in Unity, there is a, a nice uh, animation curve object that we can use and this will allow us to manually draw that response curve okay and now for the score we can go ahead and uh, run, uh, first calculate the uh, norm so we'll say for now we'll just set this because I don't know what we're going to feed into the score until later so but for now if, once we get the normalized value we can go ahead and call return the response dot evaluate and we feed in the normalized value here so this will give us our uh, utility score from the normalized value of our game world data right 
Uh, so now, in order to uh, score, run, get a score from the game world data, we probably need to feed something into this method here, right? So let's go ahead and feed in, uh, we're, we're going to need to inject something in here, right? Um, and luckily, the agent class has a reference to a bunch of stuff here that it can uh, uh, get return, right? So the agent class has access to a lot of information about itself and its opponent. Um, there's an opponent class here also, uh, or object here. So uh, the agent is some, the, what, the, 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 the thing that we need to inject into the consideration. Okay, so let's go ahead and inject the agent here. And um, okay, and I already see one problem here, right? This is a single class called consideration but we need to have multiple different types of considerations, right? So that means that it probably doesn't make sense to just have one consideration class to try to fit everything, okay? So we're probably gonna need to make this an abstract class. So let's go ahead and do that and move this custom logic to the children of considerations, right? So we'll uh, remove the serializable, turn this into a protected so that the children will have access to the response curve, and this becomes an abstract method here okay so now we can define a bunch of different types of considerations okay so for example let's say let's create a new folder here and just call it considerations considerations and let's start creating uh, a couple different considerations. One consideration is going to be health, right? What is the health consideration? So let's go ahead and create that. Health consideration. Open this up. Let's put it in the correct namespace. Okay. Uh, and this is going to inherit from a uh, consideration. It's a type of consideration, right? Now we're going to go ahead and implement the required method, which is score. Okay, now we can put in this, uh, we can put in the custom uh, logic for scoring a health consideration, right? So as I mentioned, we need to obtain for health consideration, that means we need to get the current health, normalize it against the max health to get a sense of, you know, uh, where uh, the normalized, what the normalized health is. So we can do the norm is going to be equal to agent uh, dot, let's see, do I have a health? I guess we're going to need to create a um, current health divided by, actually, we can just say, here's what we'll do. Instead of calculating the norm in here, we can do calculate the norm, normalized health value ahead of time, right? So let's go to the agent class and do that. So the agent class has access to the health method here, and we can just create a public property here that says public uh, float and say remaining health. And this will return us health, remaining health, Okay, and then let's define this in the health class. Go to the health class. We can have a public method, public property here that says remaining health is current amount divided by max amount. So now we have a normalized value here that is that 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 represents the remaining health. And in the agent class. We're simply just returning that from the health class to whatever is asking for it, right? So here we can say uh, we can directly feed that normalized uh, remaining health value right here, agent dot remaining health, boom, and we have, and that is our first consideration. Okay, so let's recap what happened here. We created a consideration class, and we figured we we quickly saw that it needed to be a uh, an abstract class so that we can inherit and create multiple different types of considerations. 
and then they has to implement a score and we have to inject in the agent into the score method so that uh, these considerations has a way to access game world data. It's accessing game world data through the agent uh, and then the agent will just have a bunch of properties or methods that will return normalized values to the consideration. And then the response value will run the evaluate uh, on this consideration, on this normalized value to get a utility score. Okay. So let's, uh, how do we want to do this? This is probably going to need to be... Let's see here. This, these are just normal classes. Okay. Let's see what else is complaining about. What is this saying? But it has no considerations. Um, so let's go to the action AI action class and give it a list of considerations here. We'll say serialize field protected consideration considerations and let's go ahead and create a public property here that will return those considerations okay um, and then let's go back to the agent and, or not the agent, the utility AI script and fix this. Now this will call considerations, considerations and score needs to take in an agent. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll come back and fix that. Considerations.length. Okay. And let's see, so score requires an, uh, us to inject an agent in, which means that the utility AI needs a reference to the agent. So let's go ahead and do a, uh, give it a private agent, agent, and we'll create a initialization method here. Init, agent, agent. agent this dot agent equals agent okay um this probably means that the decision maker needs to have a public init method so we'll say public virtual void init agent agent okay so uh, now we got to do public override void init. So this gives us access to the agent. Um, and let's see, decision maker is a mono behavior, which means that utility AI is also a mono behavior. Now you might be asking, okay, why didn't you just uh, create a start method or a wake method and directly reference the uh, agent script onto your utility AI mono behavior? Well, the reason for that is because um, I don't like to use the start and awake method to initialize uh, variables um, because when you have multiple scripts using the uh, start method and awake method to initialize things, uh, you quickly run into the issue where the scripts uh, run into race, race conditions, uh, encounter race conditions where uh, things that start referencing each other are, are become null. You get a lot of null reference expressions because there's a lot of start and awake methods to be trying to run um, at the same time and they're not calling, uh, getting the references they need. So I like to just initialize things in one single place and it's going to be the agent script. So we're going to go ahead and do our void start and we'll call decision maker dot init. And we'll provide this. We'll inject in this this agent. Okay. So now that allows us to get our utility AI uh, to to give the agent uh, reference to our utility AI. And now we can go ahead and pass in this agent here. Okay. So that fixes a lot of errors. Um, let's see what other errors are we encountering. 
All right, look like that. Looks like that fixed everything. Now, let's look at our actions again here. You can see here, even though we added a list of considerations to our action, here is our AI action here, over here. We have a public list of considerations, or sorry, we have a serialized field of uh, consideration array, but it's not showing up in our inspector. Uh, well, that's probably because we need to add a serializable to it. So let's see if that fixes this. Okay, that still didn't work. So this is a Unity thing here. Um, because we want to be able to set our uh, the properties of our considerations, especially this response curve, uh, we need a way to display considerations inside of uh, the inspector here, okay? So one very convenient way of doing that is to turn this into a scriptable object, okay? You can you can turn this, and this is just one way of doing it, right? You can you can make a consideration either a mono behavior, in which case you would have to create a game, another game object um, in the scene hierarchy here, right? Um, or you could create a scriptable object, and then that way you can just drag and drop the scriptable objects onto uh, the scripts. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, um, actually it might be helpful to see this in action. Mono behavior. If we turn this into a mono behavior, we no longer need the serializable. Uh, the health consideration becomes a mono behavior, right? And now, okay, so now you, you see that we uh, do have considerations in the uh, inspector, and we can add as many as we want. But that requires us, because it's a mono behavior, that means that if we, with all the health considerations have to, basically has to be sitting in a scene object here in order for us to drag and drop, right? So in order to drag and drop a health consideration here, we would have to create something like this. The ability one, uh, health consideration, health consideration. And then we would have to continue to basically add more and more game objects uh, to the scene just to hold this consideration. I don't like doing that. Um, I think that's uh, very not elegant because you end up with tons of game objects in the scene, and that's just not uh, that's not good, right? Because these these aren't if it doesn't need to be a game object in the scene, don't make it a game object in the scene. Otherwise, it's just going to clutter the scene up with unnecessary game objects. Okay, so instead of doing a mono behavior, we are going to use turn this into a scriptable object. And if you don't know what scriptable objects are, it's basically a just it's kind of like in the, in the middle of it's in between a regular C sharp class and a mono behavior. It's 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 able to be this uh, you can move it around in the inspector, but it doesn't actually live in this scene. It's just an asset that lives in your folders and um, it's it's meant to store data or logic. OK, so in this case, oh, sorry use turn this into the wrong one this should be a consideration and consideration should be a scriptable object okay so now that this is a scriptable object you can still add in the in the in the, in the inspector let's see here okay let's com recompile and there you go so we can still add things to considerations to the, the the inspector but it's no we no longer need to create a game object for it instead what we do is we come here and we do a we create a way to uh we give it we give the class a way to create uh the descriptable object so we'll say file name is going to be um health consideration and menu name is going to be uh Utility AI consideration health. Okay, so now what we can come we can come here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here called the resources folder, and this is where we're going to store all our scriptable objects. So we'll call this considerations. And we can go into the folder, and we now have this option here to create a consideration. There you go. 
So now we have a scriptable object where we can define our response curve. And inside this the health consideration, it contains the custom logic to calculate that utility value from the normalized remaining health. Okay. So now we're injecting the agent, a mono behavior, inside of this scriptable object. And the scriptable object is only running logic on the data that the agent has available on it. Okay. And this is why I really like scriptable objects in Unity. It's a very modular way to build things and um, very clean and modular way. The only thing, the only uh, drawback is that it can't ac directly access anything that lives in the Unity scene. So you have to manually inject, you have to inject in the uh, scene data into the scriptable objects via some sort of class that lives in the scene. Okay. So this is the health consideration. And uh, the health consideration, right? Let's go ahead and define the, the, what the curve would look like for this health consideration. We know that when health is high, probably you want to um, you want you want the you want the utility to be high when when the health is high, right? Meaning, if my health is high, I want to uh, probably want to attack. Uh, but then again, you run to the issue of, okay, but health consideration can be used for multiple actions, right? Uh, and you're right, which means that we probably have to create multiple health considerations for different actions. So let's be more precise with the name of this consideration and say um, health or attack consideration. And since we have a light and heavy attack, we'll say light attack consideration. So now this consideration is the health for light attack consideration. Okay, and it's of type consideration. So for light attack, uh, well, if it's, if it's this, this curve here looks pretty good, right? I just these are some pre predefined curves that the animation curves uh, gives you. Um, you can manually modify this whatever way you want, like by just grabbing this here and moving, moving it around. Uh, or right click here, you can edit the key directly, but we're just going to go ahead and use this default one because it looks pretty good to describe what we want, right? So what this here tells me is that if my health is really high, my chance, the utility of doing a light attack should be pretty high. Okay. Um, actually, let's do this curve here. This might make a little bit more sense. Um, because we probably want the 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 agent to, um, well, for now we're, let's just keep it like this one, right? It's it it captures the general behavior we want for light attack. If the health is high, then our uh, if the health is high, then the the utility of doing a light attack should also be high, okay? And the the lower your health gets, the the less and less you want to attack, okay? So that is the health consideration. Let's what what other considerations would be necessary for attacks, right? Um, energy consideration. Okay, so let's create an energy consideration here. We'll call this, um, actually, we'll, yeah, we'll call this energy consideration. Okay. And just like the health consideration, we're going to inherit from the class consideration class. In fact, what I'm going to do here, just to quickly make this go faster, is just copy and paste the, all this and change the name energy and then we got to change up our menu names energy consideration health energy okay and then uh, we got to do the same thing here now we're not now the 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 game world data that we are evaluating using to calculate a score is not health, right? It's energy. So we need probably uh, an, an equivalent uh, property, but for energy, remaining energy. Okay, so let's go ahead and define that in the agent class. So the agent class is here. And we have access to the energy here. So we're probably going to do public float remaining energy. Energy energy dot remaining energy 
Okay, and then let's go to the energy class and actually define what that is. So the property here would be public float, public float uh, remaining energy, and it's going to return current amount divided by max amount. And that gives us our normalized value. So if you go back to, let's see, it's semicolon there, save, and let's go back to here. Now, that's our energy consideration. We get the raw game world date, or rather, uh, the agent already captures the world, has a reference to the raw world data. And then it just, uh, it provides this way to, for this, this property here for us to access the normalized value. And then we feed in the normalized value into the response curve to get the utility score for energy consideration. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new consideration scriptable object for energy. We'll say energy and we'll name this energy for light attack consideration. So for the light attack, the energy, if we have a lot of energy, we probably don't want to use the light attack. If we have a lot of energy, we should just throw everything we, we want, we, we can at the enemy, right? Like just make the first blow as, as heavy as possible. So that means that if our energy level is high, we don't want to do a light attack as much. So the curve is probably going to, um, let's start with this one. And let's say that this will probably be, let's say this is like 0.8. And this, actually, let's actually do an actual curve. So this will be 0.8. And this will probably be something like, um, if energy is really high, I don't want to do a light attack. I want to make sure that I'm doing a heavy attack. Okay, I'm going to do it flat. Okay, so this is the curve of what it's going to look like, right? If I have a lot of energy, I probably don't want, I, I want to uh, not do a, a light attack. I actually want to do a heavy attack. But as my energy decreases and decreases and decreases, it's more and more likely the, the utility of doing a light attack becomes more and more favorable. Let's actually make this, you know, maybe 0.9. Because at zero energy, it shouldn't, shouldn't actually shouldn't be able to do anything. But so as my energy decreases, the chances of me doing a light attack increases. But if I have a lot of energy, then the chances of my me doing a light attack should be, you know, a little bit less. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create um, uh, health and energy for heavy attacks. Let's go back to our, actually, let's do energy for energy for heavy attack consideration. So now the response curve should look something like this. Um, it probably is going to look, if I have a lot of energy, I should probably throw everything I can, ha I can at the enemy. So it's probably going to look something like this, right? A lot of energy, yep, definitely going to be doing this. Except instead of making it one, let's go ahead and make it like 0.9 or something just to give it some variability. Same thing here. Let's give it like 0.2. There you go. So at if, if my energy, if my normalized remaining energy is almost one, meaning it's almost full, then my the utility of doing a heavy attack is very a lot. Okay. And as my energy decreases, I don't want to be using too much energy. Uh, and I should probably be doing some uh, light attack or something. Okay. So that is the the energy utility for heavy attacks. Let's go ahead and create a scriptable uh, consideration for health, uh, for health for heavy attack, right? Uh, health, health uh, for heavy attack. Okay. So if if my health is high. Uh, what is what is the utility for doing a heavy attack looking like? Mm. If my I well, let's ask the reverse question. If my health is low, how much should I want to do a heavy attack? 
Well, if my health is low, I probably want to take out the enemy as fast as I can. So that means that the utility of doing uh, a heavy attack um, when your health is low should be pretty high. So it probably would look something like this, where this should be maybe 0.8-ish. And this might look something like 0.5, let's say. There you go. So that way, um, as your health decreases and decreases, you want to do more and more of the heavy attack. That way you take out your enemy as fast as possible. Okay. So that's this, that's health for light attack, health for heavy attack, energy for light attack, energy for heavy attack. Is that, is that enough for, in terms of considerations? Um, that's for attack. So let's, let's see, there is a healing action here. So let's, let's, we probably need, yeah, we need considerations for healing here too. So, um, health for healing. So we're going to create a new health for healing. This is a nice example because it's pretty simple and it just depends on two pieces of game world data, energy and health at the moment. Um, we can add more, but first let's, let's consider the healing first health, uh, for healing consideration. Okay. This is the health for healing consideration. How should that response look like? Well, if my health is really high, I probably don't need to waste my time, my energy healing, right? Uh, so it's probably going to look like, um, we'll excuse this curve. So at, at high health, the normalized remaining health, if it's really high, I probably don't want to heal. In fact, I might, I'm going to even make it like 0.1. And then if my um, health is really low, I probably want to heal, right? So let's make this flat. That way it stays between one and one. So this probably, this captures the general behavior of how uh, health should uh, determine healing, right? At high health, I don't want to be healing as much. At low health, I really need to be healing, okay? So this is the health consideration for healing. Now let's do energy consideration for healing. Let's create an energy consideration for healing and call it energy for healing consideration. Now, how would that look like? Well, if my energy is high, um, I probably want to have heal, but if my energy is low, I probably shouldn't be trying to heal, right? So it probably looks something like this. Okay. Um, and just that it's not sitting at zero, maybe we could do like 0.1 here and maybe 0.9 like that. Okay. So this is the response curve for energy, uh, consideration for healing. Okay. At high energy, I don't want to be healing as, or wait. Yeah. At high energy, I want to heal, but at low energy, I probably shouldn't want to heal as much because I don't want to consume all my energy, right? Okay, so that takes care of health. Um, this is used, these are all the considerations that just depend on the health of the agent itself. It's not even considering the, 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 the health of the critter, right? Or the opponent. We could definitely create more considerations uh, that takes into account the critter's uh, uh, health. Uh, in fact, let's do that, right? Um, we have health consideration, energy consideration. Um, maybe we can rename this to, so these are health considerations. These are self-health, right? So we can actually, let's rename that. Let's rename it self-health consideration. Okay. And if you don't know that shortcut I did there, it's uh, literally just control RR if you're using uh, Visual Studio 22, okay? And let's do here, control RR. I'm going to call this self energy consideration. There you go. And let's update the name of the menus. Energy, and we're going to call this self. Same thing for the health. Let's rename this to self health and health self. 
Okay. Now let's go ahead and create uh, a new consideration type here that take that is that that does that that processes the 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 health value of the opponent. So we'll go ahead here and create a new script that says um, opponent health consideration consideration. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing here. Just copy everything and then just adjust the names. We'll call this, change the name to match the class. Opponent health consideration. Change this to opponent, 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 and opponent here, okay. So this is the opponent health consideration. What value are we going to feed into the response curve? Well, it needs to be the normalized remaining health for the opponent. Okay, and we look, we see that the only we are injecting the agent into the consideration, which means that the agent needs access to the opponent. And lo and behold, I have access to the opponent right here. So this is going to look now like this: agent dot opponent dot remaining health. There you go. And that's our opponent health consideration. Okay. Um, and let's just leave it here now. We'll just do opponent health consideration. We're not even going to look at the opponent uh, energy consideration. This is just to give you an idea of accessing information about the agent itself and accessing information about the agent's opponent, right? So let's go here to our, our consideration scriptable objects and create a new one here Let's say, now the health opponent consideration is the one we want, right? Opponent health uh, for attack. And we're just gonna use a, this general consideration for both light and heavy attack, okay? So if the opponent's health is really high, I probably want to do like a heavy attack on it to try to, do as much damage as I can to it, okay? So probably something like this. So at high opponent health, you I, the utility for doing heavy attack should, or attacking it should in general should be higher. Um, you could even, actually you could even argue that maybe we could actually make a parabola here. Um, let's, so let's actually do that. We can make this a parabola so that we get a more interesting curve here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a key right here and move this down to maybe like uh, I don't know, 0.5 here, like this. And grab this handle here, do this, like that. Okay, so this is the response curve for taking into consider for the opponent's health, right? If the opponent's health is high, uh, I should probably really want to attack it to bring it down the health. And then once the opponent's health gets to halfway, the urgency to attack is not so much. And then as the uh, opponent's health gets lower and lower, I I should really just you know uh, take him out completely. Okay, so this is the response curve to define that kind of behavior. And you can play around with this response curve whatever way you want. Um, it's all up to you how you want to define the behavior. But this is the behavior that I'm choosing to do, okay? So now we have a bunch of considerations we can actually plug into the actions. So let's go ahead and do that. For the blue warrior, we're going to replace this random decision maker, remove component, with the utility AI. Okay, and I'm going to drag and drop there. And that is now the decision maker for the agent. And for the abilities, I'm going to come here and add a couple of considerations, right? So for the light attack, we had, what did we have? We had health for light attack right here. For the this guy, uh, we have energy for light attack right here. And uh, we have um, opponent health for attacking. So these are our three considerations for the light attack. Let's look at the, uh, the, the the heavy attack. Let's go ahead and add a couple considerations there. Well, we have the health for heavy attack consideration, the health for, uh, sorry, the energy for 
heavy attack consideration, and we have the uh, opponent health for attacking. Okay, so these are our considerations for the heavy attack. Now for the healing, what are our considerations? Well, we have health for healing here, uh, energy for healing here. Where is it? Energy for healing. So only two. Okay. These are our two considerations for healing. Okay. So that is for the blue warrior. If for the critter, I think we're just going to keep the random decision maker. That way we have two kind of different AI systems here. One is just a completely stupid random AI and one is the utility AI. Okay. And we're going to see how that plays out. Okay. Um, Let's see, the actions here don't for the critter don't need any considerations because our AI system for the critter is just a random decision maker. Okay. Now, no errors. Fingers crossed this works. Let's go ahead and press play and see if our we see our blue warrior making some smarter decisions. Okay. Press play. Okay, the blue warrior decided to do its attack. Critter's thinking, does a heavy attack. Let's see what the blue warrior does. Does a heavy attack. And it's turn. Let's see if the blue warrior heals. Oh, does a heavy attack and kills it completely. Okay. Well, let's keep playing. light attack interesting I was expecting it to do a heavy attack light attack again interesting so the AI is clearly not doing what we we're expecting it to do maybe we made an error somewhere It's constantly doing light attacks for some reason. Heavy attack. Okay, this is odd. Let's take a look at our code to see if we maybe we missed something. Our decide action here, let's see, this is our utility AI decision maker logic here. We loop through all the actions. We score the actions, and this returns a float. The score gets averaged here. And then we store the score into the action. And then it picks out the best action here. If a dot score is best greater than the best score, go ahead and replace it. And the best action is this, which then we return best action. And our agent gets this current action and runs it. Yeah, that looks right to me. Let's take a look at our considerations here, just to make sure that it's making sense. Um, our light attack here, health for light attack consideration, which is here. It's saying, um, if my health is really high, I want to do a light attack. What is this? This is self-health. Okay, well, that's that's pro that's probably why we were seeing the behavior, why it was constantly doing light attacks. Well, if its health is really high, um, let's compare it to the heavy health for heavy attack, self health, health for heavy attack. These are self health. Okay, well, that explains why it's constantly doing uh, a light attack all the time. It's because 
for heavy attack, our chances of doing heavy attack is much smaller than the light attack when the health is high. So maybe we need to uh, adjust this a little bit to make more sense. Let's think about this again. For heavy attack, if my health is really high, what is the likelihood of me doing a heavy attack? Um, it's 50, 50, 50. Well, for light attack, maybe we should do the same thing. If, if my health is high, then it should just be a 50, 50 chance. And if I'm low, it'll just be a 0.1 chance. That, and let's make this flat. So it looks like this. Okay, so now the chances of doing light attack is much less. Um, heavy attack, that's fine. Um, let's take a look at energy for light attack to make sure that may also makes sense. For energy for light attack, self, this is self energy consideration. So if my energy is uh, really high, I don't want to do light attack, I want to do a heavy attack. And that is reflected here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and play again and see what happens. Now there should be more variability between light and heavy attack. Okay, so its first attack is to, to, to do a heavy attack. Okay. Oh, okay, well, I did heavy attack twice. Doesn't heavy attack. Does a heavy attack. Now heavy attack is he more favored. And the critter is just not attacking our blue guy. And I'm assuming the next one is going to be a heavy attack because we had set that if you're, uh, you know, if your enemy's health is getting close to zero, go ahead and do it and just and try to end them. Oh, he did a light attack. Okay. Oh, because the energy is almost out. That's why he chose light attack over a heavy attack. Heals, and I'm assuming the next attack is going to be also a light attack because the energy is pretty low. There you go. And it's going to keep doing light attack because the energy is really low. And what did we say? Energy for heavy attack. Look how small the utility of that is, right? It's really small. So whereas for the energy for light attack is really high, right? So it's with the utility of doing a light attack when your energy is low is much higher. Next turn. Light attack. Blue warriors can do light attack. Yep. And it's going to keep doing light attack. Okay. Well, but you get the idea, right? You saw that we could tweak the behaviors just by tweaking the response curves. And that is both a double edged sword for utility AI, right? It's really nice that you could just come to these response curves and adjust it to kind of reflect how you think the behavior should be like for a given consideration but it's also a lot of tuning right there's a lot of like you have to t tune it back and forth and play around with the response curve to really tweak the behaviors and that's both a, 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 an advantage and a disadvantage of utility ai even though it has decoupled all the actions from each other and you, ha you can now throw in as many actions as you want, and all you have to do is just assign the right considerations. You also have to now tweak the considerations response curve to get the right behavior. And the more considerations you add to an action, the more response curves you need to tweak and the more unpredictable the behavior becomes because it's now summing over uh, the, these action score is being summed over um, a, a bunch of different considerations. So it's both a nice and a, and a not so nice thing. It just depends on how comfortable you are with this. Um, but so you saw that uh, I, I really liked that we made the mistake with the light attack cons uh, consideration first because that showed us that was a good example to show you that you can really come here and just tweak the response curve to tweak the behavior to, that you're that you're seeing. OK. So that is pretty much it for the demo. We, uh, I coded out this game and I built, uh, built the utility AI system from scratch. 
Um, this is not the only way to build the utility AI system, of course. It is just, I'm just doing this as a live demo to show you how to build utility AI and how it plugs into a, a, an example game that's very simple, okay? Um, this uh, demo will be available on, on, on my GitHub. And so go download it and take a look at this system to see how it was built and dig into it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But hope you found this helpful. And um, in the next uh, lecture, we will be going over goal-oriented action planning and also doing a live demo code up of uh, GOPE. Okay, so I will see you then. Okay, so the first action space exploration decision making framework that we're going to look at, that's a mouthful. The first one we're going to look at is utility AI. And if you don't know what utility AI is, it is basically a decision making framework that sc scores all the available actions to the agent and just picks out the highest scoring action as the action that the agent is going to perform. Right. So now it decouples. We decouple all the actions from each other. There are no, uh, you know, transitions or uh, logic to transition from one to the other under certain conditions. None of that. Uh, none of that madness anymore. Now all the actions are just uh, separated, and the only thing that matters are how well does the action score to, to the uh, to the agent. Okay, and the only the highest scoring action gets picked. Okay, you could probably throw uh, some fuzzy logic in there also to you know, eighty percent of the time pick the highest scoring action, twenty percent of the time pick the second highest or third highest scoring action if you want to get a little bit uh, uh, more variability in the behaviors. But the idea is to score all the actions and you know, perform one of the highest scoring actions uh, that that you found. Okay. So uh, we know that we have to score the actions. How do we get the score of the action? Well, that comes, um, that is determined by the set of considerations that goes into uh, each action. So each action has a set of considerations. And this is meant to, utility AI was meant to mimic uh, human decision making, right? When we are presented with uh, choices, what we typically do is we weigh the pros and cons of the choice. And we end up, we, we usually typically pick the choice that, you know, is, has, is the most optimal for our given situation, right? The one that has the best, most pros to them. So the highest scoring choice. And utility AI is an algorithmic, algorithmic way to uh, mimic that human decision-making process. Okay, that's the idea. That's where utility AI came from. That's also why it's called utility AI because you're trying to pick the action or behavior that has the highest utility. Okay, so each consideration is basically a piece of game world data that matters to the action. Okay, so for example, let's take the shoot uh, example here and 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 run run through an example here. What are some considerations that matters to the shoot action? Well, uh, I can immediately think of, you know, ammo count might be uh, ammo count might be a consideration that matters to shooting, right? When it, when an agent should whether when the agent needs to decide if it should shoot or not, it needs to consider how much ammo it has. Um, another possible consideration might be uh, distance from enemy, right? If he's too far, maybe he shouldn't be. If he's too far, maybe he shouldn't be shooting. Um, if he's close, maybe shoot. Okay. Um, you know, another consideration might be uh, current health, right? Current agent health. You know, how how much health do I have, and should I be engaging the enemy by shooting at them, or should I not? Just you know, just try to hide. So these are examples of considerations that might matter to the shoot action. Okay. And now, so and, and you can you can add as many considerations as you want to an action. Uh, that's the beauty of it. You you can throw in as many considerations as you want. If you think of something that might matter to the action, you can put it in there, and it will contribute to calculating the score of the action. But for now, we're just going to start with three simple ones. For example, uh, and uh, so let's go through each of these. Well, now that we have our considerations, right? We base we we have to 
basically convert their values to something meaningful. Currently, the way they are, the raw value, right? Ammo count, distance from enemy, current agent health, these are all very different numbers that mean very different things. And uh, in order to calculate a score that means something, uh, we need to convert these values to that meaningful score. So how would we do that, right? Well, uh, the first thing you should do is probably try to uh, norm normalize the value in some way so that uh, you're working with within a reasonable scale, right? Because, you know, for example, right, if ammo count is five, I have five bullets left in my chamber and the distance is you know 200 meters from the enemy five and 200 are very different and they mean completely different things so we want to kind of scale these down to a uh a, 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 a scale that ma makes sense right that that is reasonable for across all considerations and the stream most straightforward way to do that is to somehow bound these values convert these values to something between zero and one right every consideration bound it to zero and one so normalize it against something so that the value you get to work with is is from zero to one. Okay, so how, how would how do we do that? Well, the ammo count consideration, uh, to normalize it, we could basically take the current ammo count and divide it by the total uh, amount of bullets that our, our, our weapon can hold, right? So current uh, count divided by max, uh, um, max, max capacity. Right, so this would give us a, a, a number, a reasonable number between zero and one. Right, so for example, if we had five bullets left and our our, our magazine can hold, uh, you know, fifteen bullets, that that's that's uh, you know, that's one third. Right, so that's like point three three, something like that. Okay, let's continue with this. Um, this distance from enemy well how can we um you know if it's the enemy is 200 meters away from me um what's one way i can normalize this distance so that it gives me something that makes sense between zero and one well uh let's say our attack range is uh we, we could compare the distance to an attack range right so maybe we could do attack range divided by uh dis our current distance so if our attack range is say, um, you know, five meters, and the current distance is, let's say, twenty meters, then we know that this value is now 0 0.25. Okay. So we've convert and, and and as let's say that as you get closer and closer to the enemy, the distance gets smaller and smaller until it reaches you know something around five. Then it, the value becomes one. Right. So now we have something in the scale between zero and one. Let's do the same thing for health. Well, how, how can we normalize health? Well, we have a current health and we have max health, right? And so that's that's pretty straightforward. We can do a current health divided by max health. And so we might be at, you know, let's say six, um, let's make it something easy. Let's say 80 and our, our max health is 100. So that's 0.8. Right. So now that we've con we, we, we came up with our considerations and we normalize them so that they're on a scale that can be compared with each other. Right. Is that it? Are these the, the final scores? Not quite yet. Right. These are not the final scores. All we did here was convert the raw number from the game data and convert it to a normalized value that, you know, can be gives us a sense of how much how. Uh, all these considerations compare with each other, right? So now we have a normalized we have normalized values that allow us to con to get a feel for how each consideration compares to each other. Now we need to actually turn in these numbers into a score. So now we have to take these numbers, normalized numbers, and convert them to mean something about urgency, right? Urgency. That's 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 the key here, right? The, these considerations uh, basically tell the actions how ur or give, give the sense of how urgent the action is. And, you know, 0.33, you know, 33 percent of the max capacity doesn't tell you how urgent it is. You need to convert it to a value that means, hey, this is how urgent this consideration is right now. Right. So to do that, we need to pass this into some sort of function. Right. So we need to turn this 
into we pass it through some sort of function each of these each of these numbers we pass it through some sort of function you know I might some sort of f of x right and we do that for all and it might it might not, might not be f of x right this might be g of x and this might be h of x right so we basically need to pass the normalized value into a function the function will then convert that this 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 normalized score, uh, value into a score me, me telling you how urgent this consideration is to the action okay well uh what 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 is so you, you now, now you can go, you could proceed this in one of two ways one way is you can actually define uh, an equation you can write out an equation here that's going to take this number as an input and spit out a urgency value a utility value okay you could do it that way or you can manually define a curve on a graph and then you just look up what if, if this is these are the x values of that graph then the y values gives you the urgency okay so you could go the equation route or the the graphical route okay um, i always go with the graphical route because that just is the easiest way to work with um, considerations um, both from a designer perspective and from uh, some uh, for from a convenience standpoint so for example let's 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 say uh let's let's take a look at ammo count right let's draw a graph for the ammo count okay so i have to define now that we have this normalized value i have to define what this normalized value means in terms of the shoot action okay the shoot action if i should say this, basically what i want this number to tell me is how urgent is the shoot action based on my ammo count? Well, if I have a lot of ammo, I, I should be more likely to shoot. If I don't have a lot of ammo, then I should probably not be shooting as often, often, right? So the curve that we're probably going to generate probably looks something like uh, this, where if ammo count or normalized ammo count is on the x-axis and the y-axis is urgency or utility, then... Uh, at low ammo count i want the urgency to shoot to be lower and at high ammo count i probably want it to be higher so the curve for um for ammo count probably looks something like this and we'll call this ammo count consideration okay so if 0.33 is down here right somewhere down here then my urgency to shoot should be pretty low right some should be somewhere around here but if my ammo count is close to one like almost full capacity then yeah i really want to shoot right because i'm i I, sh I should be more likely to shoot so that's the ammo count consideration curve okay and and this is these are these are called response curves okay that's the technical term in utility yeah these are response curves for the consideration and now we can just go down the line and define a response curve for each of the considerations okay let's go ahead and take a look at uh distance from enemy right let's draw a graph for distance from enemy um well this is let's say distance from enemy consideration if the enemy is really far away uh i probably don't want to shoot uh, but if the enemy is a lot closer, probably want to shoot there uh, when, when, when they're closer and I have a higher chance of hitting them, right? So the curve, the response curve should be look something like this. At a close distance to attack range, I should probably sh be more likely to shoot. And when it's farther away, I should the, the likelihood of shooting, the utility of shooting should probably go downwards, Okay. So 0.25, probably somewhere around like here, and, and these values are from 0 to 1. 0 to 1. Oh, well, I already wrote 1 there. But 0.25, probably somewhere around here, right? So very likely to shoot. The utility of this is pr pretty, high to sh pretty high to shoot, okay? And then we can do it for the last one too, right? For health. We draw a graph here. Health is on the bottom from 0 to 1, normalized health. 
And if my health is really high, then I should have no problem shooting, right? I'm not scared to shoot. I'm going to shoot and start a fight. But if my health is really low, I want to avoid a fight, so I'm not going to shoot. Okay? So probably the curve is probably going to look something like this. Right? So very similar to the ammo consideration. And point 0.8 is probably somewhere around here. So I kind of, you know, the utility of shooting is relatively high. Okay? So the y-axis of these curves gives me the utility. And the input of these curves are the consideration values here. Okay. These are the scores that we are going to average, these utility scores here. Okay. So the utility score here, I don't know, let's say that's one. The utility score here, uh, let's say it's somewhere on like 0.8. And the utility score here might be somewhere on like 0.6. Right. So if I average all the if now, now that I have the, the the utility scores of each consideration, OK, now I can go ahead and average it. And the average is this is me just cutting in from the future. I realized I made a mistake with this uh, diagram illustration here. Uh, obviously, the uh, ammo count is 0.33. So the score should be something down here. Um, and it wouldn't be one. So the score here is, you know, something very small, like maybe 0.2. So our average is actually not 0.8. Our average is something a lot smaller, um, something around like maybe uh, point, point 0.4 ish, right? So that that would be our our our, our approximate average uh, score for the shoot action. So. And that makes uh, more sense because if the ammo count is low, but the other two are more favorable, then it just, the ammo count drags down the average score to something a little bit lower. Okay, back to it. So the, the, the score for sh the shoot action is 0.8, okay? And then we just repeat this process for all the different actions that are available to the agent. And we pick out this, the action that has the highest score, okay? So hopefully I didn't lose you there. Let's just quickly recap. We start with the in-game in, in world data, right? The raw data from the game, ammo count, distance from enemy, current agent health. We normalize that data to a range that uh, makes sense. So we normalize uh, ammo by max capacity. We normalize distance by the attack range and we normalize the uh, health, concert, health value by the max health. That gives us the normalized values. Now we can take the normalized values and plug them into their individual response curves or their individual functions. And the functions and or response curves gives us a utility value for that consideration, okay? So in essence, what we've done is we've taken in-game world data and converted it into uh, utility values that can be compared against each other, okay? And then we just average all these uh, con uh, s consideration scores and that the average of that score is the uh, act score for the action. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Um, hopefully that wasn't too complicated. It's a really nice uh, framework. I really like utility AI. It's pretty simple to understand. The, the only difficult part is actually coding a scalable architecture for, for utility AI. Um, because you decouple all the actions from each other, you're, it gives you the freedom to throw in a lot of actions, but in that freedom of being able to spin up a lot of actions, any number of actions you want, and uh, all the all these considerations, you actually have to be very careful with the architecture, right? Um, you don't want to just create tons of game objects in the scene and throw a bunch of consideration game objects in there also. Uh, you, you want to do it in a smarter way. But uh, at this point, let's go ahead and jump into Unity, and I'm going to do a live coding session uh, to, sh to, to walk you guys through how to code Utility AI for a very simple uh, game. Um, and the reason why I'm diving into in specifics here is because there's not a whole lot of resources out there available for Utility AI. Uh, like I said many, many times before, a lot of tons of resources for finding state machines and behavior trees, but not a whole lot for Utility AI and GOP and the, the more advanced uh, decision-making frameworks. All right, so let's hop into Unity and take a look at our demo.